Okay, for this example problem, I actually have it all written out. Um, I was recording the video once and I made a mistake and then I thought I was getting the wrong answer and I was doing something stupid in my calculator. So instead of having to rewrite everything out, I'm going to keep it as is um, and we'll go through and look at all of the stuff here. So I will erase a couple things here. So let's erase um, this for now and kind of start over there. So we're given this problem, we're asked to find the Norton equivalent. So first off we want to recognize the fact that I've got this dependent power supply. So because of that I'm not going to be able to just simply find the open circuit voltage or cir circuit current and then turn off power supplies in order to find Z equivalent. Um, I'm going to have to find Z equivalent by finding both the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current and then dividing the two. All right, so I'm going to start by finding the open circuit voltage. So I will label this here V open circuit. And remember that is equal to V Thevenin. Now just like I had mentioned in the previous problem that we were looking at, we have some possible issues here. Um, just because there's no circuit element here, that doesn't mean this voltage is zero. That's going to be plus minus VD. And then similarly we have this plus minus VC across the capacitor. Now you can argue several ways why you know this voltage is not going to be zero. There's not going to be current because yeah there's no path for the current to flow, but you can have voltage with no current. So that's fine, um, but there is still going to be a voltage there and that's because of the dependent power supply. I've got, if this was zero, that would imply that Vx was zero. But if Vx was a zero, that would imply there's no current going through the resistor, which means this voltage then here would have to be zero as well. So clearly that's not what we have, so there's definitely going to be a voltage there. And the key result here is then that V open circuit has got to equal Vd plus Vc. All right, so let's move down here. Next thing we should look at is what is Vx. Now if I draw a little current here and call this just I, well, first off, I is going through that resistor, so it's pretty clear that 10 times I would be equal to Vx. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and write um, a loop equation here. So I'm going to write a loop equation. So this is a loop equation here. So I'm coming into the negative side of this power supply, so that's why I have a negative parenthesis, negative 40 plus J40. I'm not going to multiply that negative out because I'm just going to be adding that to the other side. And then I have plus 10 times I. And then again, there's no current flowing over here. So if there's no current flowing over here, it would just be minus J10 times I. And then if I just rearrange that, grouping things together, I get 10 minus J10 times I is equal to negative 40 plus J40. And then solving that for I, you would get that I is equal to negative 40 plus J40 over 10 minus J10. And that's negative 4 amps when you do that computation. All right, but what am I trying to do here? Let's go back here. I found this current here, but what am I trying to do? I'm trying to find VD and VC. Well, Vx then is simply 10 times I, which is negative 40 volts, but then Vd is just 5 times Vx, so that's negative 200 volts. So we have one of the pieces we need. Remember, we're looking for Vd and Vc up here. We've got one of the pieces we need. We got Vd. Now, similarly, Vc, well, that's just simply current times the impedance, and again, because there's no current in that other side there, that's just simply going to be negative 4, times the impedance was is negative J10, which is then equal to J40. So the end story here is that the open circuit voltage is equal to negative 200 plus J400. All right, so now what do we need to do here? Well, the next thing we need to do here is, I'm going to erase these for now and then put them back in, is we need to find the short circuit current. So again, we redraw the circuit here, and making sure to keep all your polarities labeled, and then we short the terminals, and we're looking for this I short circuit. So I'm going to draw a couple loops here that I had erased, I1 and I2. And then I'm going to go ahead and notice here, again, that I'm needing to figure out what this voltage is in terms of I1 and I2. Um, so we have plus minus Vx, 
vx is equal to 10 times i1, and then um, this voltage here would be 5 times vx, which would get me 50 i1. So that's what this voltage here is. So I'll even write it in the diagram here. This is equal to 50 i1. All right, so then let's look at our loop equations. So I'm going to write loop 1 here, minus negative 40 plus j40 plus 10 i1 minus j10 times i1 minus i2. And that's equal to 0. All right, then just rearranging that equation, we would end up with 10 minus j10 times i1, because I'd have 10 minus j10 i1, but then I have a negative j10 times a negative 1, so that would be plus j10 i2. And that's equal to, of course, I'm adding that to the other side, so this negative would disappear when I add it, and I'd be left with negative 40 plus j40. And then if we look at the second loop, we can go again and look at the fact that we have um, Vc plus Vd, and that would be equal to 0. Um, now, we have to be careful with polarity here, but we're talking about voltage across the capacitor plus voltage across the dependent source is equal to 0. So we write a loop here. Following the arrow, you'd have minus J10 times I2 minus I1. And then we have to be careful here. I'm coming into the negative side of this power supply, this dependent power supply, so that'd be minus the voltage there, minus 50 times I1. And that's equal to 0. So then again, we're just going to rearrange terms. Minus 50 plus J10 I1 minus J10 I2 is equal to 0. Well now, we're going to set up another matrix here. And you might want to pause it at this point. I'm not going to go through here. This is just, again, writing those two equations, this equation here and this equation here, using the complex notation. Now, some of you might notice that you could just simply add these two equations together. And the I2s would cancel out, and you could solve for I1. Yeah, but I wanted to do the matrix method here, because again, I want us to get used to being able to do these matrices to solve for I1 and I2. So if we use that matrix, um, and that's not the problem we're going to do next, um, we would reduce row echelon form that. And if I reduce row echelon form, you'd get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 6, 4, and then 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 4, 6. And so remember what this is telling us is that I1 is 1 minus J amps, and then I2 would be 6 plus J4 amps. All right, so then we need to know what the um, equivalent impedance is. So now remember, what do we have here? This is equal to I short circuit, which is my um, Norton equivalent, or my Thevenin current here. And so then I need to find my equivalent impedance. And remember that the equivalent impedance is equal to V open circuit divided by I short circuit. So going back, I'm not going to scroll back up, but we have here that um, V open circuit was negative 200 plus J40. And we divide that by negative 20. I'm sorry, I'm giving the answer here. I'm dividing that by 6 plus J4. So I'm going to just double check to make sure my answer is correct here. So let's do this computation in my calculator. And we do get what I was going to say is the answer. And we get negative 20 plus J20, um, which looks a little weird because we're getting a negative resistance. Now, we've said all oh, resistance can't be negative. 
So what's going on here? So let's draw the Norton equivalent. So the Norton equivalent, remember, we have a current source, and this current source would have a current of 6 plus J4 amps, and then we would have a resistor, and then that's positive imaginary, so that would be an inductor. And then we have terminals A and B. We have negative 20 ohms, and we have J 20 ohms. And that would be the correct answer. Now, some of you, again, might remember that I said that, well, you can't have negative resistances. That doesn't make sense. Well, the issue we've got going on here, it makes perfect sense. You might say, how can it make perfect sense? The issue is, I'm going to scroll back up here, is this dependent source here. This has got all sorts of circuitry inside that we don't know anything about. All we know is that it gets me five times the voltage. And so what effectively that is doing, the effect of that dependent voltage source is giving us a negative resistance effect. Now, in reality, of course, you can't build this kind of circuit in the sense I can't get a resistor with negative 20 ohms. But for analysis purposes, this is an effective um, kind of uh, resistance here that we'd get for the Norton. And so this would be our final answer.